Hello uh, and welcome to the show. Look at the pigeon dance. <laughs> we start this week's downhill chaos with the newly released three-wheeled vehicle on a um, beam NG drive and it does a little dance when you stand still and wiggle the steering. Uh, this I, sh I should point out that uh, with this latest update, when I loaded up this map it got a stew of errors when I tried to play it. I just click continue and it, the map seems to load fine, but if there is any sort of odd textual glitches that I didn't notice at the time going on, then uh, that's probably what it is. Uh, this car is not, uh, is not easy to drive. It is not easy to drive whatsoever. As, as you can see, I tried to turn into the first corner and it bounced. And then the third corner it nearly fell over, which is never a good sign. <laughs> when you're when you're just turning a corner and it does that. Yeah, that's just not that's not a great thing to be seeing. The biggest problem though is just the suspension. Is it just gets bounced around too much. Here it goes again into the next corner. Uh, in the end I don't know if I broke the steering or quite what happened. Uh, either way I couldn't stop it or turn it in time and uh, then we started to well we fell off of course pretty much. Uh, it's pretty strong this car I have to say. It didn't deform as much as I expected when it took that little dive off a cliff. I continued to struggle with this vehicle. When I drove the uh, D-Bird down here a while ago, uh, it was a three-wheeled version of the Gravel D-Series pickup truck, uh, I had some problems with that. Uh, this one has, has different problems. Um, I, again, I just hit a bump a little bit wonky and I couldn't regain control of my car in time and then the car decides to eat what's left of its tri- I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, this doesn't have the, res the restrictions on rolling over. The D-Bird, you couldn't actually roll it, the, well, I guess the way it was made, it, uh, it, it just wouldn't allow you to roll it. This is a lot less forgiving. It will allow you to roll it and it will get stuck in a ditch. Um, yeah, a lot less forgiving this one, a lot easier to roll, and the suspension is incredibly bouncy. It, it, you can just see it gets chucked around so unbelievably much. And of course it doesn't really have that good of a steering because, you know, it's only got three wheels. Again, just turn it into a corner. I mean, admittedly this is a very steeply banked corner there. Uh, turned in and it fell over, completely on its own. Not an awful lot I could do about that. Uh, the only thing I can do is to take the quarter a bit slower next time and hope that it uh, the <laughs> that it doesn't roll over again same corner and uh, we get around the corner a little bit further before we hit a bump and then we fall over yeah three wheels it's safe to say is not really what you want when it comes to a sort of rally stage this is not the worst terrain that you will come across in beam not by a long way Part of the reason why I picked this course is so that all manner of vehicles can tackle it and hopefully make it to the bottom. This car doesn't like it. It does not like it at all. I had to take a silly line through the first corner there. Uh, that's not the fastest line through there, but I have to take it to avoid the bumps. Otherwise, the, the back of the car just jumps around all over the place and you lose so much time trying to gather it up. And there's also a very good chance that you'll hit a tree or lose control and roll the damn thing. So uh, yeah, I've ha I'm having to take a few silly lines through these corners just in an attempt to stop the car bouncing, stop the car rolling, and sometimes just to try and get the damn thing turned as well. <laughs> yeah, having one wheel at the front is not not so good for, for the steering. I also can't chuck this car around like, like I would with some of the big powerful four-wheel drive vehicles. I can't kind of flick it in on the handbrake. Uh, because you'll just roll this. Or if you don't roll it, it won't do anything. So, yeah, you've got to be just generally slower through the corners on this. Got to be careful uh, on the bumps. Try my best to avoid the bumps with this, but there is only so much you can do. This corner is uh, the exit of this corner here is notoriously bumpy. Sure enough, there <laughs> you can see that the, like, the, the problems are amplified. This is what the, all the other cars have to deal with. They don't show it as much as this thing does. This thing really does show every single little bump. I guess it's partly to do with the, the very light weight of this thing. It's very small and, of course, the, the lack of stability. Now, the big problem with this one is that jump there. There is no real good way of taking that jump. What I had to settle for, what I did there, is I had to be slow coming down the hill just so that I could keep the car in a straight line. If you try and take enough speed down there to actually clear the jump properly, you can't control the car over the really large bumps. So I had to be slow down there in the hope to control it. I knew I was going to take a hit, or I expected I would hit the car on the other side of the jump. 
Uh, I lost a front bumper, but uh, the car was still fine, still made it just a sprint across the line, and the pigeon has made it down the course. I was actually surprised how well this car survived. Uh, it takes a pretty nasty hit on that on that second second big jump, uh, and you know I feared I might break something something in the steering or whatever as we do a happy dance to celebrate that it made it. Um, yeah, it it didn't take as much damage from that as I thought it would, so it survived down the course. Not at all easy to drive though, very bouncy, easy to roll. Uh, but again, we are testing it on a rather extreme course. Up next we have got the Covert MRI. This is a mid-engined rear-wheel drive, I believe it's rear-wheel drive anyway, uh, Covert. Uh, as you can see there's the engine uh, in there. I thought I'd give this one a go. This is quite a nice car to mess around with on the tarmac stuff. So it was interesting to see how it would do on the, the this sort of rally stage. Also handbrakes have been fixed in this recent update which is lovely. It means the cars stay stationary at the, uh, at the, top, at the start of the course. Attempt number one went wrong pretty early on. Uh, again, we have another car with fairly bouncy, not nowhere near as bad as the bloody pigeon suspension, but uh, it's still a little bit bouncy. Well, it's more it gets thrown around, I think, than it's actually bouncy on this. This is more uh, stiffer suspension on this vehicle, and uh, it does all sorts of weird and wonderful things. This is a <laughs> an interesting car to drive. Uh, I've made it round the first corner, uh, the first couple of corners, and then promptly spun it. It's all good, we can carry on, but uh, yeah, that time was uh, a, a little bit ruined. So again, we come towards the first corner, and I made, uh, made a slight error. <laughs> Turned in a bit too soon, uh, and well, as you can see, did a hell of a lot of damage. But it didn't kill the Covert. Now, I know the engines in, in the... Well, in the middle, towards the back, all the drive train and all the drive lines at the back of the car. I wasn't though expecting it to work quite this well. I've I've completely mashed up the front of this car, and yet it's still turning. It's still getting round the corners. I mean, <laughs> it's it's incredibly rare that a car will keep going with this sort of damage. Normally, something will have found a way of scraping on the floor, making it undrivable. Normally, it won't turn very well. And despite everything. The, the three-wheeled covert was making its way down the course. Yeah, you had to be a little bit slower. The wheels would lift up and the open, open diff meant you would spin a wheel that was in the air. But, amazingly, it actually completed the course with this level of damage. It was the front of the car and that made it all the way down the course. That's remarkable. But that shouldn't work. That really shouldn't, I'll just try to show you how close the, the, the bottom is. That is pretty much scraping on the floor near enough. And that survived the course. And <laughs> I was amazed that the Covert managed to make it all the way. So filled with confidence, I headed off to try with a four-wheeled version. And it didn't work particularly well. Uh, I've managed to bend a completely different wheel at a silly angle. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is there. There is a little bit of road. If you hit it just slightly wrong with some cars, it flips the vehicles. And yeah, pretty spectacular flip when uh, when things do go wrong uh, <laughs> on here. Rolling would become an issue for the Covert. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why. Normally these sort of cars don't have so much of a problem with rolling. You normally kill suspension or you kill wheels or you, you smash your bumper on the floor over some of the bumps. Because this is a pretty low car uh, on the most part. Fairly stiff chassis as well. You can see it lifting up its wheels. Uh, but it just liked to roll. On that occasion, I think I did bend the steering arm or something in the steering because I couldn't steer to the right on that jump uh, or heading on towards that jump. So uh, that's why I, I couldn't sort of recover the vehicle. But yeah, the Covert liked to liked to fall over, and I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why. This time I managed to kind of stop it from rolling over. Then I turned into the corner, realised I had no steering, and that's because I killed the wheel at. Uh, yeah, it's probably one of the slowest speeds. It, it, it doesn't. <laughs> the car looks absolutely fine from that angle. You couldn't tell. Uh, it was just at a, at a wrong enough angle to uh, to bend the wheel. I managed to roll at a completely new corner as well with this car. I've never. I don't think I've rolled a car certainly not in that manner and at such a slow speed. I will admit I was probably spinning anyway at that point, and uh, I may not have been able to save it. But it was, it was still. Must have just hit the terrain a little. Uh, must have been carrying enough speed when I hit a small bump in the terrain enough to lift the car on its side and, uh, and roll it over. However, I did get a clean run 
with the Covet after a little bit of time. It wasn't too bad with this car. Again, as with various sort of road cars that I've driven down here, uh, this has not really got the suspension built for, for this kind of terrain. I used the Rally Spec version of this mod, but it's, it's still the suspension is still very stiff. It's still closer to a sort of a road rally car than, a, than off, an off-road one. As you can see over these bumps, it is an <laughs> incredibly stiff car. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a fight in some places down here. The car will bounce around and you'll have a bit of trouble putting the power down. As you saw with the three-wheeled version, that kind of just exacerbated the problems. But um, if you have one of the wheels in, in the air or the back of the car, it's got an open diff so it'll just spin that wheel in the air. So on some of the very rough stuff, you can have real problems trying to put the power down. Don't have the same problem with this second jump. While it doesn't really like the landing a massive amount, uh, it's certainly a hell of a lot better. Ignore the blinding lights. The reverse lights are incredibly bright on here. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, when I, I was going slow enough that the game wanted to put it in reverse. Yeah, don't worry about that. And uh, it is around the final corner for the covert and just a run to the line. And uh, it made it to the finish line in one piece. And despite having managed to make it all the way down the course that time without any damage, and it made it down with uh, only three wheels, it couldn't unstick itself from a small post. <laughs> I managed to get the car caught here. There was bugger all I could do as well. I, it won't get free. It is. It got well and truly wedged um, in the post. Our third and final vehicle today certainly looks the part. This is a Ford Ranger. I believe this is taken from, or the livery at least, is taken from Off-Road Drive. I, I, I knew I recognised it from somewhere. Uh, so yeah, this certainly looks the business when it comes to off-road racing. And I was expecting that this could put in a pretty good time. I was thinking, yeah, this might go really quite high up on the leaderboard. Maybe not quite challenge the top cars, but it should be pretty damn good. I was sadly mistaken. That, that was my first attempt with the car. I, I, I turned into the first corner, we got bouncing, and here we go. Down. <laughs> we've, we've skipped out sort of half the track from that one from that ro one roll. Amazingly, the thing's still fine. The Ford is still working, all the steering is working. I mean, okay, you're going to need a bit of bodywork doing. And there's something sticking out of the engine bay. I don't know what it is, but there, <laughs> there is something sticking out there. The car still worked, though, after that crash, which really surprised me uh, on the, for this one. Rolling was, again, to be a problem for this, and I'm not so surprised that this has an issue an issue with, with the rolling. As you can see, it has got a considerably higher ride height and very bouncy suspension, as we see, <laughs> see into the first corner. And then we'll probably get wrapped around a tree. Yeah, very, very soft suspension. And uh, I was really hoping I could get the, the Ford off the tree here because I wanted to try and see if I could drive it bent at that angle. Sadly, it was wet, the tree was kind of wedged through the car, so there, there, there was no silly attempt with the uh, with the Ranger. Yeah, this is a, this is a tough car to drive. And if I wasn't having problems rolling, I was having problems with understeer. <laughs> I thought, oh yeah, I got around that corner. I gave it a bit of handbrake and tried to get it turned in. Didn't really want to turn in, so I thought, okay, on the exit, give it a bit of power, maybe a handbrake if it goes wrong didn't work and uh, yeah I just understeered straight off. Uh, turn one again we've gone for a many a roll uh, <laughs> down the course I think it's trying to go for the record. This thing just falls over so easily I don't think I've driven a car that falls over quite as easily as this on, on B. Like, even some of the really big maybe the monster truck falls over as easily as this. Uh, again first corner got things a little bit wrong didn't roll this time stopped it from rolling uh, but couldn't counter see it, couldn't stop it from uh, going in the direction it was headed already. Hit a bump and then got airborne and hit a tree. Um, and then <laughs> I was trying to show off how good this thing is off road. This is a very good off road car. I showed off the suspension in this little dip and I managed to beach the damn thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, things were not going quite to plan with the Ford Ranger. And uh, yeah, it was well and truly stuck up there. <laughs> we're on three wheels coming into the first corner and we go around the second corner. Look! Look, we haven't rolled on the opening section as we come into the third corner now. I didn't even touch the bank on the inside. Normally, if you if you hit the bank there, it's unsurprising that you can roll it. I didn't even touch the bank, and the the, the Ford still fell over. I mean, it's still working. A little bit twisted chassis, but it's still working. Uh, <laughs> this is just ridiculous. It really is so incredibly hard to drive this car. And uh, to be fair to it. Um, 
you know, it's not quite designed for this sort of thing. This one is actually a little bit funny. I managed to snap a part of the steering there, so you see it was pulling to the left, and I just can't stop the car. And then I end up out a little bit wide, and then we go for not quite a tumble, but we are completely out of control down the course. And yeah, we've come to a complete standstill here. Uh, this is not designed for, I think, the sort of speeds. This is more of a almost a rock crawly style vehicle. And we're taking some of these corners quite fast. And I think that is what damages uh, the wheels. I, <laughs> I, I took a silly line. I got a tiny bit brave and cut the corner too much. Forgot about the Mound of Doom and ended up on two wheels. Saved it. Ended up in a tree though, as is fairly common. It's very hard to save a car around this track without going off. It's such a narrow place uh, on most of the run. Uh, again, another another big bounce, another rolled corner. I, it is so incredibly hard to to get everything balanced with this car. You want, of course, I want to be going quick. I want to be setting a good time with it. But uh, you got to have that with plenty of caution in trying not to roll this car. I thought I'd carry on with the very damaged thing but uh, I'd broken the steering. Uh, I'd quite severely broken the steering. Uh, as I was saying, yeah, a little bit of, a little bit of a weird thing with this through some of the some of the higher speed corners. I think you can bend and twist the steering and and that was causing problems. Sometimes it wasn't very extreme. This is a very good example of it. So we're going through the first section and things are looking all right. You know, I haven't rolled it, haven't got it massively on two wheels, but the steering has snapped. I I will admit that that is that Steering that broken, I'll just stop the run. But on a few of these runs, I did notice the car was starting to feel a bit wonky, starting to feel a bit difficult to drive, and was sort of slightly pulling. You won't notice it from this viewpoint, uh, but the car was a bit unhappy. Like, it didn't. It, I think it just bent something just enough to make it awkward. It wouldn't like, sort of snap it completely as that previous run showed, but it would just bend it enough to make the car a bit of a faff to drive. And on this final run. At some point on the run, and I don't know what, uh, one of the front wheels gets bent slightly. It's not enough for me to, to sort of pull over and stop, um, because it was still perfectly drivable. It was just not quite as nice as it had been. Uh, this isn't the easiest of vehicle to drive down this course, I'll be honest. It's designed for much slower courses. Uh, the suspension is too bouncy, really, to be attacking the, the jumps at the speeds that this thing can do. It's a pretty quick truck. Don't get me wrong, it is a, it's a pretty fast vehicle, but I just can't use that speed because I'm having to be very cautious through all of these sections that are bumpy or they've got a slight camber or got a slight hill on the inside. I got so lucky down here. I got it's just incredibly lucky. If I hadn't got that bit of air time and cleared the inside bank, it most definitely would have rolled. But because I was slightly in the air, I didn't clip the bank, so I got away with it. And again, through these final few corners, still having to be very cautious, braking very early, try and get the car turned in, uh, and making sure I don't either run wide and find bumps or, or hit the inside, and, and then just acceleration across the line for the Ford. Yeah, this is a tough car. It's a tough car to drive on this particular route. Very good off-road vehicle, uh, but for this, for this kind of route, it's just a little bit too high, a little bit too easy to roll over, and the suspension is too soft. Uh, again, damage done to this was mostly after I crossed the finish line, although I am not sure if one of the front wheels wasn't slightly bent. I'm pretty sure something was wrong with the car anyway uh, for, for a fair bit of that run. Not massively, but uh, yeah, something wasn't happy <laughs> on there because it was a little bit awkward to drive. Anyway, it is on to the times, and the covert is the quickest of the th three, sorry I can speak, with a 121.0, fractionally behind the D-Series pickup truck and fractionally ahead of the Grand Marshal. The Ford Ranger put in a very good time, despite its fondness for falling over and breaking the steering, with a 121.3, uh, only 0.3 of a second slower than the Covert, and importantly, it beats the other Ford, the F-250 by just over a second. It is all very close in this kind of mid-table area. It's, uh, yeah, pretty tight in that particular section. We have to go a long way down to find the Pigeon with a 2 minute 7.1 in 33rd. Uh, and I did time the run for the three-wheeled coverts that made it to the bottom, including the big crash with the tree and the spin that must have cost it two or three seconds at least. Uh, the the three-wheeled covert did a 142 one. So the car that wasn't designed to be a three-wheel vehicle is quicker than the two designed three-wheel vehicles Sure, uh, that Covert was amazingly good, despite the fact that it was utterly smashed up at the front. I don't know how that thing was so so easy to drive, so good to drive 
down there. Uh, however, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. All of the mods used in this video shall be in the description so you can find them and give them a go yourself if you wish. However, until next time, goodbye.